Well, finals may be coming soon for students, but midterms are here for politicians. That's right, it's election day. Coming up, we'll have a look at how people on campus feel about voting and what one student is doing to help the turnout at the polling places. Good evening, and thank you for tuning in to Newswatch Ole Miss. I'm Matthew Hindley. And I'm Lauren Cunley. The university has students from all 50 states enrolled here, but what does that mean for them when it comes to voting in Lafayette County? Newswatch reporter Brianna Bynum has more and joins us live from the Oxford Conference Center where voting is taking place now. Brianna? I'm here at the Oxford Conference Center where earlier the lines were long as many people came out to vote. Among these people were college students and I saw familiar faces at the polls and I got the chance to talk to some students about the elections today and what some are calling the poll of a lifetime. Many Lafayette County residents went to the polls to cast their vote in the midterm elections. And senior Kevion Taylor says many Ole Miss students don't vote because they aren't invested with life outside of campus. A lot of college students especially don't really follow politics or uh, especially not even uh, our local elections here in Lafayette County because a lot of us aren't invested here in Lafayette County. We just go to school here. Taylor says college students should take time to be informed about candidates and go to the polls. We are the generation of tomorrow. It's important that we be involved in the election process. Junior Alexandra Kissel is from Illinois and says she wanted to cast an absentee ballot but decided not to because of trouble in the past. I even tried to vote in the last election and I didn't get my ballot in time to actually submit it so I didn't even bother this time. It was just a out of a, it was a hassle. Spencer King is a grad student who successfully cast an absentee ballot and says it was important to vote in today's election, although he's away at school. The outcomes of this election will still affect uh, my family members in Kansas. Both King and Taylor believe college students should be politically active and vote in elections because the outcome of these elections affect everyone. Political decisions made by these elections will continue to affect us for the rest of our lives. Their policies of today are going to directly affect us tomorrow. For college students away from home, voting may seem unimportant, but some Ole Miss students think otherwise and hope to persuade their peers to think differently. Poll here closes at 7, so it's not too late to get here if you still want to vote. Reporting from the Oxford Conference Center, Brianna Bynum, Newswatch Ole Miss. Thanks, Brianna. For some Ole Miss students, making sure their fellow students get to the polls to vote has become a passion of theirs. Newswatch reporter Annie Mapp tells us how one Ole Miss student is making sure everyone votes. Arias Adams is the Director of Voter Registration for the Associated Student Body. He has been helping people get to the polls since 7 a.m. People back and forth and while doing that I realized that if it's busy like this at 8, you know, um, 7, 8, 9 in the morning, then I should probably cast my ballot first because I know the rest of my day was um, really busy. Adam says he feels that election day should be considered a holiday so people can get out to express their opinion. People have opinions, people care, and this is our opportunity to um, have our voices heard when you're not okay with what's going on in our state legislators and our governor's mansion and all the way up to the White House and um, what's going on in Washington. For students, getting to the polls with a busy class schedule and limited parking can seem discouraging. Faculty at the university's history department came up with a way to make going to the polls a little bit easier. Jesse Cromwell is a history professor at Ole Miss who also wanted to help students get rides to the polls. We might just try and see if we can get some more students out to the polls just by uh, lending, our, lending our cars. So here we are. Giving students a ride to vote was important for Cromwell. He says he teaches about citizens in other countries who don't share the same opportunity. People in those nations fought and died and struggled for that right to vote, right? And, and you know, we don't have to go that far back in, in, in our country's history and in our state's history uh, to, to find the very same thing. Polls will be open until 7 p.m. tonight. Annie Mapp, Newswatch, Ole Miss. Well, if you still need a ride to the polls, some companies could help you get there. And just for you, Uber and Lyft have partnered with various voting service organizations to offer discounted rides to polling stations. Rides to the polls are 50% off today, with free rides for communities that face significant obstacles for transportation. The ride-sharing companies have also placed a special program within the apps to help customers find their polling stations. If you're watching this, you still have nearly two hours until the polls close, so call up an Uber or Lyft. 
Are you ready to vote? Newswatch reporter Anjanita Williams is here in the studio to tell us more about this civic right. Anjanita. Thanks, Lauren. Yes, today is election day, and some people on campus are ready to tell you exactly why they think exercising your right to vote is important. Election Day is finally here and UM students have been spreading the importance of it. Student Christopher Harris says that exercising the right to vote is a way to reassure a purpose behind the efforts of those who fought for voting rights in the past. So it's important to actually have your voice heard because a lot of this is what people back in the day, back in history was fighting for. So if you just don't go out there and you don't vote, then what were they fighting for? They basically put their lives on the line for nothing. Emily Irvin says that voting is a chance for those who have fought for rights to gain a voice in society. I think it's important to vote because people have been like fighting for rights all this time and really want a voice in government, and so this is their chance. Students are not the only ones who look forward to the election. Dr. Donald Cole says that voting is something that everyone should play a role in. Our democracy, if you will, depends upon the people voting. Uh, the democracy pretty much means the will of the people. Well, how do the people express their will? They express their will at the polls. They express that will through voting. And so it's important that everybody takes uh, a part in that democracy process. Cole says he is expecting the election to show unity and the will of the people. At our point in time in history, we turn out to be a fairly divided uh, nation. But we must realize that uh, we can't let that division make us falter as a nation. But instead, we have to, uh, again, accept the will of the people. And that's what we're kind of expecting from this election. We vote. It is not too late to cast your vote. To find out more information on how you can be active in this election, feel free to visit vote.omiss.edu. That link is posted on our Facebook page. Lauren, back to you. Thanks, Anjanita. And the Tennessee Senate race is officially the most expensive campaign in Tennessee state history. Current State Senator Marsha Blackburn is vying to keep her seat in Washington against Democratic challenger Phil Bredesen. According to the latest information from Real Clear, Pro Real Clear Politics, Blackburn is leading by only five points. The site is calling the race a toss-up. If the Democrats want to take, the, take control of the Senate, they will need Bredesen to win the seat. Well, millions of dollars have been spent on ads, thousands of hours pounding the pavement, knocking on doors, making calls. Sending texts, many of which were sent to my phone. Well, it all comes down to today for the 2018 midterm elections. People lined up early on election day to have their voices heard. Whoever you decide on, you know, that's your choice and that's good because that's what this country is about. The candidates are also casting their ballots. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're so with you. I guess I can reveal, cast a vote for myself. All 435 House seats are on the ballots across the country, and 35 out of the 100 Senate seats, and 36 out of the 50 governors. As of yesterday morning, at least 31 million people had voted early, blowing early voting numbers from the last midterms out of the water. So grateful to, to all these first-time voters who are going to decide this election. Voting amongst those 18 to 29 is up 500 percent. Both Democrats and Republicans hope that means good news for them. The Republican agenda is the American dream, and that's what we're doing. We're bringing back the American dream. Us winning tonight, I think, will send a message uh, to Mr. Trump and Mr. DeSantis as well, uh, that the politics of hatred and of division, of separation, uh, that they come to an end. But whatever drove people to the polls over the last few weeks, there's hope that trend will continue today. You have the choice to choose, so get up, get out, vote. Well, some polls close on the East Coast starting at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. Polls across the country will continue to close as at 6 and 7 o'clock approach in each time zone. And remember to keep it with Newswatch tonight as we'll keep you posted on all election results. Be sure to follow us on our social media pages, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook for the latest updates on key races right here in Mississippi and races across the country. Speaking of parties, bring out the birthday cake because Ole Miss officially turns 170 today. 
On this day in 1848, the university held a celebration to honor the opening of the school. Ole Miss began with 80 students and 23 years was Mississippi's only public institution of higher learning. Now the university has more than 23,000 students and 100 degree programs. Happy birthday again to Ole Miss. Well, last night, severe weather rolled through the Mid-South and across Oxford, but it looks like Oxford escaped the worst of the storms. Tornado sirens went off for about an hour last night, but the damage suggests nothing touched down in our area. But surveyors from the National Weather Service in Memphis have confirmed damage that looks like an EF-1 or possibly an EF-2 tornado touched down in Tupelo. EF-1 tornadoes have wind speeds between 73 and 112 miles per hour. Well, nothing has been officially confirmed by their surveyors, and they are continuing to assess the damage. Every afternoon, someone gets in a car wreck in Oxford, but there's one street in town where you'll most likely to get hit. Newswatch reporter Madison Amon shows the spot to avoid and how to stay safe. Driving down Jackson Avenue can sometimes feel like risking your life, and Oxford police say you have reason to be nervous. The spots they say to look out for are at Chick-fil-A, Rebel Drive, and Sorority Row. And I think a lot of that is impatience. Everybody's busy now. Everybody's in a hurry to get where they're going to go. And you're talking about just a large number of cars that are getting onto one street at a certain period of time. All of those things going in together just, it, it makes for the, I guess you could call it a perfect storm for the access to occur. What seems to be the biggest problem for drivers is the lack of focus, especially with phones. People are so connect connected to social media, their friends via text, phone calls, things of that nature. That's another distraction. Local crossing guards also agree that phone use in cars adds more danger for not only drivers, but also pedestrians. Main cause is not paying attention to the crossing guard and lack of respect for the pedestrian. A lot of times tra traffic will be backed up because class is going to change and people in the car have the tendency to get on their cell phones or tweet whatever and you know we got to keep it moving. If it ain't flowing it ain't going right here. Madison Eamon, Newswatch Ole Miss. Coming up find out how U.S. gymnastics may be getting a new leadership change and what it could mean for the sport. And stay tuned to see which tech company is no longer worth as much as you thought. But first Delia Vandeveld has your first look at the current conditions. Hey there Oxford and happy Tuesday. Luckily we haven't seen any rain today, however we can expect some scattered showers throughout the week, some stronger winds picking up and cooler temperatures. As we take a look at the current radar, you can see that Oxford is clear as well as the surrounding areas. Stay tuned later for a full report coming up on Stormwatch. What do you think you're doing, Kevin? I uh, was just gonna drive home. Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, there are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. Like hearing voices? Like your text to emoji ratio? Oh man, the selfies. <laughs> Selfie nailed it. We all have warning signs that let us know that we're probably not okay to drive. Mine is pretending to be your subconscious. Craig, come on man, let's put it right home. So, I'm kind of new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. It's like, hello? This is where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide-and-go-seek. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day, I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. Mail bomb suspect Caesar Sayok is being held without bond after making his first appearance in a New York federal court today. The 56-year-old is accused of mailing at least 16 bombs to targets including CNN, Hillary Clinton, and former President Barack Obama. None of the explosives went off and no one was injured. Sayok is facing five federal charges in the case, which authorities call a domestic terrorist attack. If convicted, he could spend up to 48 years in prison. 
Sayak's lawyer says his client plans to plead not guilty. Sayak was flown to New York yesterday following his October 26th arrest in Florida, and his preliminary hearing is set for November 12th. Well, Harvey Weinstein's defense team filed a motion yesterday to have the five remaining sex crime charges against him dismissed. His attorneys say the entire case was based on a defective grand jury proceeding that was irreparably tainted by police misconduct. Weinstein's defense attorney outlined a series of missteps that New York prose prosecuting authorities took in an attempt to convict the disgraced media mogul. Last month, a felony charge against Weinstein was dismissed due to alleged obstruction by NYPD Detective Nicholas DeGaudio, who has been removed from the case and is being investigated by the NYPD. The U.S. Olympic Committee is taking steps to revoke U.S. USA gymnastics status as the sports governing body due to the sex scandal abuse involving former team doctor Larry Nassar. Nasser is currently serving 40 to 175 years in prison for sexually abusing women and girls while performing medical treatment. The, govern the governing body of the sport has been under fire for how it has handled sexual assault complaints. U.S. Olympic Committee CEO Sarah Hirschland says that until the decertification process is complete, gymnastics training and competitions will continue. To infinity and beyond, NASA shot its first ever 8K video of Earth. The footage shows astronauts living, working, and conducting research from the International Space Station. The camera used for the video was a Helium 8K camera by RED, which is the same brand that, that has been used for films such as The Hobbit Trilogy and Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Viewers can watch the high resolution footage right on their computer screens. And even if your device doesn't have 8K capabilities, the video will still play at a higher quality than normal, just not with the full effect. Well, only three months after Apple made history by becoming the first U.S. stock worth $1 trillion, the stock closed yesterday below that milestone level. The tech giant hit the mark on August 2nd and was, has held above that level until now. Apple's, Apple's stock began declining last Thursday after the company warned investors that its holiday sales could come in below Wall Street predictions. Well, the company doesn't expect this to be more than a minor setback as the company pushes to sell more iPhones, devices, and growing business services like Apple Music and the App Store. Well, he won't be playing 007, but on the rating scale, he's a 12. That's right, British actor Idris Elba has been announced as People's 2018 Sexiest Man Alive. Elba is the 33rd man to hold the title. The sexiest man was not always this good looking though. Elba says he went through an awkward stage growing up because he was tall and skinny. He was even picked, picked on for his name, Idrissa Akuna Elba, but it but it was all changed when he grew a mustache. Then he was known as the cool kid on the block. How about that? You know what's sexy? Voting. Hmm. <laughs> if I could <laughs> vote on the weather today, I would definitely choose to have more fall days like today, Lon. Me too, Matthew. It's been a beautiful day in Oxford. Coming up in her extended forecast, Delia Vandeveld will let us know if the clear skies and cool weather will stay. Leah! Did you put a new dent in that? This one? No. Were you texting and driving again? Yes. Hi, Leah. Hi, Dad. Sorry about your bumper. <laughs> <laughs> Disaster tips from the objects left behind. My home wasn't insured. But you can check your insurance policy now to make sure you're covered. Oh. My savings are lost, but you can put money aside and plan for unexpected disaster costs. We're lost forever, but you can scan important documents now so they survive. Oh. For more tips on how to prepare, visit ready.gov.
Good evening, Oxford. We are currently looking at a temperature of 72 degrees with sunny skies, but they are starting to head down because of daylight savings time. It is currently winds moving at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Now, taking a look at the map, you can see that conditions are clear in Oxford. As we take a look at the current temperatures across the map, you can see Oxford's at 72 as well as South Haven, Holly Springs at 70, Corinth at 69, and Tupelo at 74. Temperatures for tomorrow will be a slightly cooler than today with a high of 56 in Oxford, 55 in Holly Springs and Corinth, 57 in Tupelo, and a high of 54 in South Haven. For tonight, we can expect the temperature to drop down to around 49 degrees with mostly clear skies, some stronger winds, and a small 10% chance of rain. As for tomorrow, the high will be 56 with cloudy skies, some light winds, and the rain chance increases to 20%. Now, taking a look at the five-day forecast, you can see that there is rain moving in on Thursday and Friday, but things should clear up as we head into the weekend. Temperatures will drop. Back to you, Matthew. Ah, more rain. Thanks, Delia. <laughs> well, coming up, see if the Ole Miss women's soccer team were able to make their second consecutive appearance in the NCAA tournament. And see what the women's basketball team has to do in order to start off their season strong next. Don't ignore the subtext. It's on us to intervene in sexual assault. Because we can. Take the pledge at itsonus.org. There was an old woman who lived in a shoe. She had so many children, she didn't know what to do. She gave them some broth without any bread and kissed them all soundly Lights out. Good night. and put them to bed. Hunger is a story we can end. End it at feedingamerica.org. Think getting dumped by text is harsh? Try getting dumped by tennis ball. My ex owner drove me out to the woods, yelled fetch, and by the time I bought the ball back, he was gone. Yeah, I was pissed. But the folks at the shelter helped me let go of my anger. I learned coping skills, like taking it to the hole. Boom! Now I'm ready to fetch again. But how about I throw and you run and get it? Welcome to Sports Watch. I'm Rebecca Donaldson. The Ole Miss women's soccer team has received a bid to the 2018 NCAA tournament for a second year in a row. The Rebels will travel to South Carolina to play the Clemson Tigers on Saturday at 5 p.m. The last time these teams played each other was the 2015 tournament when the Rebels eliminated the Tigers in penalty kicks. This one allowed Ole Miss to advance to the Sweet 16 for the first time in school history. Ole Miss enters the tournament with a 12-7-1 overall record, similar to Clemson's 12-8. Heading to the pavilion, Ole Miss women's basketball opens with their first regular season game tonight at 6 p.m. The Rebels are hosting Norfolk State tonight after a victory against Lemoyne Owen in their preseason opening game last Friday. The team is entering with a new era with Yolette McPhee McEwen joining them in her first regular season game as head coach. She also serves as the national coach for the Bahamas and has most recently coached at Jacksonville. 
With many new faces on the staff this season, the women's basketball team is off to a hot start to prep for tonight's game. Dallas Cowboys owner and general manager Jerry Jones continues to support quarterback Dak Prescott despite his performance in the team's loss to Tennessee Titans on Monday. Prescott had two turnovers that led to Titan touchdowns. Prescott is under contract for the Cowboys through 2019, but Jerry Jones assured he is a long-term solution for the team and will be extended. Prescott has thrown five interceptions, lost four fumbles, and has been sacked 28 times this season. Prescott could be looking at a $100 million contract, which is the norm for a starting quarterback if they have a great year. New Jersey Devils center Brian Boyle achieved his first hat trick last night. During the team's fight against cancer game, Boyle is a recent cancer survivor himself and said that the event was near and dear to his heart. Boyle was able to score his first goal during the period of the game, falling by two back-to-back -back goals in the third to give the Devils a 4-1 lead over the Penguins. Hockey Fights Cancer is a month-long initiative that is now in its 20th season to help raise funds and awareness to the cause. That's all for sports. Be sure to follow our Twitter at Newswatch underscore UM for more of your favorite sports updates. Back to you guys. Thank you, Rebecca. Well, Google doesn't look much like Google today. Up next, find out what the company has changed their logo to. Stay tuned to see how this tech giant is helping to get out the vote this election day. Here is my handle and here is my spell. When I get all steamed up, then I shout. Tip, Tip me over and pour me out. Oh. It only takes a moment to make a moment. Cheers. Take time to be a dad today. We are Ole Miss Rebels. As Mississippi's flagship university, we dig deeper, see farther, work harder. We pioneered human organ transplants. We helped prove Einstein's theory of gravitational waves. We are distinguished as a Carnegie R1 top 2.5% research institution. We are Ole Miss, transforming lives and the world. When I was your age, I was just like you, fascinated by stars. <sighs> but now, I get to search for life in the universe. And who knows, maybe life is looking for us, too. So we're like aliens to them? Yeah. Does anyone want to be a scientist now? I do. Awesome. We need more girls in STEM. Maybe we can find aliens. This year, patriotism shouldn't just be about pride of country. It should be about love. Remember that to love America is to love all Americans. Because love has no labels. Well, in case you didn't know by now, it's election day, and even Google's homepage is encouraging Americans to go vote. Typically, users see a Google logo in the company's signature colors, but today, the Google Doodle reads, Go Vote. And if you click on it, it takes you to a page where you can type in your address to find your voting location and the hours to your polling place and the hours to your polling place. Search results also feature addi additional information such as ballot tools and polling place locators. Well, I made it to the polls today and I didn't get hit by a tornado. Here's my proof. I'm glad <laughs> nice. the weather was nice today so we can make it out there. What about the rest of the week, dude? So temperatures will drop a little tomorrow and we can expect some rain moving in on Thursday and Friday, but luckily no tornadoes. Excellent. Nice. Thank you, Delia. That's all we have for tonight. Thank you for tuning in to News Watch on this. I'm Matthew Hinton. Be sure to join us here again tomorrow night at 5 and on newswatcholemiss.com. I'm Lauren Conley. Thank you and good night.